In the Serengeti, cheetahs live uneasy lives. Females with cubs must hunt. Left alone, their offspring are exposed to the savagery of more powerful predators. Even scavengers can gain the upper hand over this slender feline built for speed. Cheetahs are the fastest, but also the most vulnerable of the big cats. Two cheetah mothers, both with varying fortunes, raise their families against all the odds. Does experience count, or are they both at the mercy of Lady Luck? Five male cheetahs and one female. Wherever she goes, her entourage follows, lured by her readiness to mate. She's in estrus, but she's no pushover. There's tension among the coalition of five. <laughs> the female and suitors stay together, sometimes for several days before she's ready to mate. As the subordinate males watch and wait, the dominant male cheetah moves in. The female acts like any other feline during this period, and if the pairing is successful, in three months she'll give birth to a litter of five or six. Females with cubs search out hiding places to keep their young safe from predators. At any sign of danger or discovery, they'll immediately move their cubs. Thick vegetation provides sanctuary and cheetah cubs are well camouflaged. Even so, a wayward youngster isn't allowed to wander far. This female's territory is centered on a group of kopjes. These rocky outcrops are a distinctive feature of the Serengeti Plains in Tanzania, East Africa. She has five cubs. She'll need good fortune and considerable skill to raise all of her offspring. Another female's home range is further out into the open plains. Termite mounds are excellent vantage points from where both danger and prey can be spotted. She too has a big litter. 
Mortality in young cheetahs is high. Nine out of ten fail to reach adulthood. Raising four cubs to over a month old is a significant maternal achievement. With so many to feed, the female plains cheetah needs to eat often. The cubs are dependent on her milk at this age. Gazelle are the cheetah's favored prey. The female cheetah checks for predators. She won't leave her cubs if she senses danger. The coast is clear. A successful kill gives the whole family a fighting chance. lead very different lives. They play no parental role and wander the plains alone or in coalitions. The more there are, the greater the chance of competing with other males for estrus females. But the bigger the group, the more prey they must bring down. Play helps this strong band of four brothers to hone their hunting skills. Lone males have less chance of breeding, but still mark their territory. The plains female is wary. The male checks the female scent to see if she's worth pursuing. He can smell, sense and see that she's not receptive. Even though the male has lost interest, the female is nervous and determined to put distance between the threat and her cubs. The copier cheetah has kept her cubs well concealed. They're now old enough to come out of hiding and accompany their mother across the plains. Amazingly, she still has five healthy youngsters in tow. To feed five, now needing meat, the copier cheetah must spend many hours hunting. She searches for suitable prey, unaware that she too is being closely watched. A hyena keeps a low profile. If the cheetah senses his presence, she'll abort her hunt. Cheetah can accelerate to 40 miles per hour in just three strides. Seconds later, she's up to 70. The cubs are hungry, yet cautious. 
The copier cheetah calls for her cubs, but still they don't come running. The hyena could easily kill a cheetah cub, but with a defensive mother so close, an easy meal is the most prudent option. The mother cat puts herself between her cubs and this real threat. She's a lightweight compared with a scavenger and won't keep him off her kill for long. But her main incentive now is to buy time for her cubs. Losing a kill to a hyena is a common occurrence in the Serengeti. The copier mother must hunt again, but at least her family is safe. Over on a far copier, the plains cheetah's search for prey has led her into unfamiliar territory and grave danger. Lions kill any cheetah cub they find. It's believed that the top predator kills others to get rid of competition. By facing the lioness, the female cheetah risks her life to protect her offspring. This lone lioness has been in a fight. Her injuries have made it hard to hunt, and she is very hungry. Try as she might, the mother cheetah will not deter a starving lioness. But the big cat is badly lame. Perhaps pain makes her reluctant to continue her pursuit. She calls for the company of her own kind. If they're within hearing range, the cheetahs could be doomed. Copia Cheetah keeps her five cubs close as the sun sets. Cheetahs are diurnal because their hunting technique relies on sight. With the lioness at large, the cheetah mother keeps her cubs hidden in the rocks for the night. The Plains Cheetah has moved her cubs under darkness towards more familiar ground-based territory. Some cats are more devastatingly active at night. Daybreak, lions announce themselves, while the plains mother looks anxiously to what lays in the grass. Now she has only three cubs. The fourth was fatally wounded.
the Cheetah family seems reluctant to leave. It's as if they need to make sure that there's no hope. The lion pride could strike again at any time. The female must lead her remaining cubs far away. It's difficult to imagine how death affects wild animals, but often a female's biorhythms compensate for her tragic loss. Males spend their lives patrolling and searching for receptive females. If a female loses a whole litter, she'll come back into season shortly afterwards. This time, the males consent that she's an estrus and worth closer investigation. She's nervous and rebuffs the unaccustomed attention. It could take days for the female to accept her suitors. They retreat, giving her some space. They can wait until she's ready. The iron grip of the dry season is dramatically released as the November rains soak the parched ground. Remarkably, the Kopya mother still has her five cubs, all with wet coats. Soaked and cold cubs can succumb to hypothermia. Their mother leads them to find shelter among the copias. The brief deluge over, it's time to get clean and dry. After that, it's time to play. Like all young cats, cheetah cubs need to tone muscles, sharpen reactions, and practice hunting techniques. Cheetah cubs are blind at birth and completely helpless but it takes just six weeks for them to follow their mother on hunts. The copier mother has her eye on prey, a small mixed group of Grants and Thompson's gazelles. At this age, the cubs must stay out of sight or risk ruining a hunt, or worse, get injured by flailing legs. A 
Only when her victim is forever still will a female summon her cubs from hiding. They must all eat their fill quickly. Death in the Serengeti never goes unnoticed. It's only a few minutes before a throng of attendant scavengers has gathered. Marubu storks and vultures wait as their numbers swell into an intimidating crowd. Faced by such a mob, the female cheetah eventually backs down, but for once the family has fed well. As the seasons turn, the great migratory herds of wildebeest move through cheetah territory. Hundreds of thousands of hooves could trample a cub hidden in long grass. But there are just too many for the plains cheetah to keep at bay. She taunts the herds with a series of mock charges. There's nothing mock about the lioness's charge. In a macabre spectacle, the herd watches. They know the safest place to keep an enemy is within sight. Finding a young wildebeest alone and isolated is unusual. The band of four males suspect something is wrong. Interest aroused, they advance, cautiously at first. Their slow burning stalk becomes an animated tableau of feline grace. The young wildebeest can't outrun the cheetahs. 
And with four against one, the outcome is predictable. It's always amazing just how quickly the scavengers arrive at a kill. But it'll be a while before they'll dare steal from four cats. The plains cheetah cub stares at its working mother off in the distance. A single hunter is always easier to overpower, and the vultures know it. The mother cheetah's valiant attempts are futile. She can't keep so many away. The noise of squabbling vultures draws another scavenger from afar. With brute strength and crushing jaws, a hyena easily scatters the feathered throng. But it's too late. All that's left is a solitary leg. To keep her cubs alive, a female cheetah must hunt and hunt again to compensate for repeated losses. She's up against powerful predators and sharp-eyed scavengers, but she has speed on her side. By outrunning her prey and competitors, she stays on top of the game. Months pass, hunt by hunt and lesson by lesson. The once vulnerable cubs grow to adolescence. Against the odds, the copia cheetah has raised five cubs successfully. But they're not yet independent and never totally out of danger. Although dramatic and seemingly harmful to the grasslands, bushfires are beneficial. They encourage new growth. With these isolated grasslands now bare, new prey presents itself to the copia cheetah's cubs. Again, it's mother who has to do the actual catch. During the rainy season, the land is swift to recover.
Full-grown male lions could kill an adult cheetah, but only if they can catch them off guard. The cubs are now faster than any other land animal. Even so, lions still make them very nervous. The big males are on patrol. The cheetahs have no kill and therefore are of little interest to the lions. Minutes ago, the family members were potential victims. Now they are curious aggressors. Taken by surprise and faced by so many bigger and faster predators, there is no escape for a bat-eared fox. The fox is anxious to move on, if it can find a gap in the spotted wall. The young cheetahs soon learn that foxes can bite and are best left alone. Hyenas, like lions, spell trouble for cheetahs. These powerful predators kill their cubs and steal their food. Even five against one wouldn't deter a hyena if there were food in the offing. but the cats haven't made a kill, so the predators go their separate ways. Fighting Grant's gazelles attracts attention. Newborn fawn could provide the plains cheetah with much needed food. The fawn can't outrun this cat, but gazelles rely on another survival technique. Fawns have almost no smell, and lying stock still, they can be overlooked. The mother gazelle flees to draw the predator away and divert its attention from the baby's whereabouts. But the cheetah is too close and has a fix on the baby's exact location. The gazelle loses her offspring so the cat's youngsters can live. Prey is plentiful and the cheetahs are faring well. The plains mother, remarkably, still has all three of her cubs. 
and the copycat's five youngsters are bounding with health. It'll soon be time for them to leave their mother. Cheetah cubs usually find themselves on their own at between 16 and 18 months old. This often coincided with their mother having a new litter. The longer the cubs stay with their mother, the longer she'll help provide food, and so, the greater the adolescent's chances. The young males in this litter are discovering their sexuality. They're unlikely to breed successfully until they're two years old. But if they leave as a band of brothers, their potential for fathering cubs is high. Cheetah cubs learn to hunt by copying their mother's example. To survive without their mother, they must be able to kill for themselves. The copier cheetah encourages her offspring to practice. There are a lot of potential targets out on the plains. If practice makes perfect, these youngsters have a lot to learn, but time is running out. Once again, it's the female that provides, but for how much longer? Cubs are often left to fend for themselves before they've learned to hunt efficiently. It's a critical time in their lives. The plains female is coming into estrus. She has a strong coalition of three males in attendance. A single male, or even a pair, could not compete with this gang. If they successfully mate, in just three months, she'll give birth again. Always on the lookout for food, the plains cheetah spots potential. A big male grants gazelle represents ample food for all the family. The cheetah cannot get a stranglehold, and the gazelle is too big and too strong. 
The cubs move in, trying to help bring down the buck. The plane's cheater has miscalculated and miscalculated badly. The stronger Grant drives her into the ground, horns piercing flesh. Seriously injured, the mother will not be able to hunt. The cubs' only chance is to provide for themselves, but adolescents are not adept hunters. It's a painful situation that emphasizes the vulnerability of cheetahs. In contrast, the copier cheetah's five cubs are doing well. Almost fully grown, they're striking out. A lone cheetah male is not comfortable with five intruders in his territory. But the cubs need their own hunting ground, and they have numbers on their side. The youngsters lack experience, but stand their ground. As is so often the fate of a single male, the solitary cat backs down. Neither side is prepared to risk injury. A cheetah that can't hunt is doomed. Stabbed by lethal horns, the plane's cheetah's end was swift. The copier female can smell death. Whether she recognizes one of her own kind is not known. She's tense and on edge. 
perhaps nervous that the killer remains close by and could threaten her offspring. The copier cheetah now returns less and less often to her family of five. Soon she will leave them all together. She is a formidable hunter and exceptionally successful mother. Perhaps it is her experience that has given her an edge against the odds.